Good morning and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like people that get mad when you tell them Merry Christmas. <laughs> really? Aren't there so many more important things to be mad about in the world? <laughs> Whatever. It's, it, anyway, let's, let's do the intro. To, yeah, let me see you over there. All right, so today's topic, fluid power, hydraulics. How awesome is that? I mean, has anyone ever looked at an excavator and be like, oh, that isn't the coolest thing ever that I just wanna hop in and play with for the rest of the day? Yeah, hydraulics are sweet, okay? And the concept and the principle behind how they work, it's simple once you wrap your noodle around it. So let's take a little bit of a look and try to explain that. So here on the operating table, this is a pretty run of the mill, like you can pick up a tractor supply hydraulic cylinder. Nothing fancy about it. A cylinder, two ends, these tie rods that hold it all together, a flange that bolts it onto something, and then a rod that would connect to whatever the heck you're trying to actuate. I mean, honestly, hydraulics aren't that complicated. People just get intimidated by them because it's something they don't understand. It's kind of like electricity. As soon as they don't know how it works, they just, don't want to deal with it. So the first and arguably the most important thing to learn about fluid power is understanding the four basic states of matter in physics. You have a solid, a liquid, a gas, and plasma. Well, we're dealing with fluid power, so I bet you can guess which one we're dealing with. You cannot compress a liquid. That is the dividing line the line in the sand between pneumatics and hydraulics. One uses a gas, one uses a liquid. You can compress a gas and build a lot of potential energy whenever it's released. However, you lack power because the thing that you're using to do the work with is squeezable, it's compressible. Whenever it meets something that doesn't move, it can be compressed and change how powerful it is. Liquid, on the other hand, cannot be compressed. The size that it is whenever it goes into the system is the size that it is for eternity. This is a classic rock in a hard place situation when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Whenever fluid goes in somewhere, it can't squeeze and make itself smaller. So that fluid has to either push something out of the way so it can continue to move or it has to stop moving altogether. If you understand that principle, fluid dynamics get a lot easier. If you dissect this and understand the guts of these things and how they work, it's actually pretty swell. So what we have here is a really crude cutaway of what's happening inside of this ram here. So here we have the barrel. Here is the rod and the piston. This is what translates all the fluid energy into kinetic, in this case linear, but whatever, that's just how rams work. So there are two ports on the cylinder, A and B, okay? One is responsible for extending the rod, one is ex responsible for retracting the rod. So if you can kind of see what's going on here, you can follow what's happening. I force oil in here from the pump from the valve, whatever, what have you. We'll get to that later. This area fills with potential energy and pressure. So that pressure has to go somewhere. It can't go back where it's coming from because that's where it's being supplied. The only other option is to push against the one moving surface in the area that it's in. So it causes this to extend, okay? Good. Same thing in reverse. Whenever I supply oil in this port, it goes around the rod, because mind you, this is a side view, it's a cutaway, so this is a 360 degree, and it will push it back from where it came. However, Pascal's law, it's just like Ohm's law for electricity, Pascal's law is the basis of fluid power. 
Pascal's law is force over area equals pressure. So what that means in layman's terms is how hard I push in a certain area equals the amount of pressure I can achieve in that area. So the more area I have, the harder I can push. That's why whenever you see a hydraulic cylinder on an excavator or a large piece of machinery, the force or the action that needs more force is always going to be on the push side of the rod. So that means whenever this guy is extending, it's going to have significantly more power than whenever it's pulling back in. Because this side of the cylinder here does not have the rod taking up space where oil could be in there pushing. See here? This is all empty space where oil has to work and push against this one side of the piston. Whenever it retracts or goes back in this way, the rod is inside of this cylinder taking up all of that area, so I have less area to push against. So if we break down Pascal's law just a little bit, this is kind of a depiction of what we just talked about. Consider this as the one open side of the piston inside of this cylinder here. Let's say that the piston inside of this thing is six inches OD, right? So I have almost 30 square inches that I can push against with all of that oil, and that is a lot of power. On the opposite side of that piston where the rod is connected that does all of the work, that rod takes up room on the face of that piston where the oil could be pushing. Let's say that the rod is a two inch OD, which would give me 3.14 square inches on the face of that rod. So we would have to deduct that of surface area that's on the other side, which would leave us with 25 square inches of pushing power over here versus the 29 on the other side. That's why you can get so much more power pushing on the side without the rod versus the side with the rod. I know this was super quick down and dirty, but this is just a small example of how hydraulics work in the case of a cylinder, at least. You know, how you can push harder on one side versus the other. The relationship between surface area and pressure. And this is honestly Pascal's law. It, it is the baseline of fluid power. If you know how hard you can push in any given area, that gives you what you can work with in a hydraulic system. So if you guys are interested in learning more about fluid power and the ins and outs of it particularly, drop a comment and let me know. Until next time.